Hi everybody, this is Oli Cantos here. For this installment of the Visionary Series, I'd like to talk with all of you about something that is really, really profound. And that is literally the relationship between what we think and ultimately what our character becomes. My amazing and cherished friend for many years, Amy Nawatani, taught me a quote from Margaret Thatcher, who is the former Prime Minister of Great Britain. She once said, Margaret Thatcher once said, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your, char your character. Think about the profound nature of that assertion. Basically, when you when you reflect upon it just a little bit, you'll realize the fundamental interrelationship between what we think and who we ultimately become. We ultimately conform to what we truly think of ourselves inside. We can say all of the right things that sound great and we can say how wonderful it is to be successful, but down deep, if we think that we're just lying to ourselves or lying to the world, then what will ultimately happen is that we will, like a rubber band that doesn't have any tension in it, we will snap back to, where, uh, to, to what we truly do think about who we really are. And so the question is, how do we instead take more of a sense of control where we understand that our true secret to success can really happen as the result of taking control of the way that we view the world. That's not to say that when things happen to us that we can't control, that, that we should control saying, oh my gosh, well, if something tragic happens then I can't be sad. That's not what I mean. Because obviously there are things happen to us, there are things that happen to us that can be really, really devastating. But, when taken in its broader context, when we have a true belief in ourselves, in our resilience, and in our inevitable ability to succeed, no matter how adverse the circumstances, then that is the thing to which we will ultimately conform. If, on the other hand, we think that we somehow are destined to fail, or if we think that somehow only others are going to be the ones to be successful and not ourselves, then no matter how hard we try, and even with some initial success, we will end up failing and not understanding why we ended up failing in spite of our best efforts. That is why we need to understand how this truly works. So the question is how? How does this really work? It starts by our taking an honest look at what we truly believe in ourselves. If there are instances in which you believe certain things about you that don't really have any basis in fact when you look back, you just may have just made assumptions about yourselves that may not even necessarily be true, you just made those assumptions, then there's no reason to hold on to those assumptions any longer. For, especially when those assumptions are, are negative and are, are, a, are a criticism or a, or a denigration of what you truly think your ability to be. But on the other hand, when you know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you are to be successful no matter what happens, then even if there are adverse circumstances, you'll still be able to be all right. And the reason why you'll still be okay is because when you believe in your fundamental resilience, then whenever there are negative situations that take place, then you'll just understand that that's just simply part of, of what can happen in the world, but ultimately you just bounce back. Two people can be placed in relatively similar circumstances and yet have completely opposite results. 
even if those individuals are who are similarly similarly situated uh, have similar talents and abilities from an objective standpoint if they think or whatever they think of themselves fundamentally deep down inside regardless of what they say to others about what they think of themselves then what's going to happen is they are going to be placing themselves in a situation where they will just find just even at an unconscious level they will end up becoming whoever they think they truly are so of course this begs the question well then how do we take control of all of that how do we know when we are making assumptions about ourselves that have no real basis in fact versus making statements about ourselves that are absolutely true and how do we know that when a statement about ourselves that we whenever we, we, we make an assessment about ourselves how do we do we really know if there is really the kind of basis in fact for us to really show ourselves why we think that way or if maybe we just may have thought those things simply because we've always thought that way and we may not even we, we may not even remember why we think what we think well the answer is ultimately that we need to first stop by asking ourselves first before doing anything else what it is we have to gain by assessing something in a specific way and if that assessment is negative or what versus what do we have to lose if we're not positive <laughs> so let me, let me break this down a little bit if you you think about your circumstances and you think negatively of yourselves about any particular absence of talent ability or skill what is the positive outcome to be gained by your thinking that you can't do something and the answer to that is nothing on the other hand if you were to assume the best of yourselves what is to be the benefit to be gained by your being and believing that you can be the best that you can be within a specific context of certain talents and abilities and the answer to that is everything so anything that any any statement that somehow says that where you say to yourselves that you're not good at a particular skill you have to step back and see first of all is it true is it really really true that you're not good at or can't be good at a certain skill or is it just an assumption if it is just an assumption just get rid of it knowing that there's no basis in fact after you analyze your lives and think about whether or not those things are true if those things are true and it's just objectively true that doesn't mean that you should next attack yourselves for not being good at specific at those specific talents and abilities instead the solution is either to make the commitment and to make the decision to get better at what you know you're not good at or to outsource what you're not good at so that your weaknesses won't end up stopping you from being successful that is what is so so incredibly amazing about knowing who you are by by doing a real honest analysis of your talents and abilities as a person it's important at this juncture to understand for all of us to understand that when we do identify specific areas of weakness that we truly are that are that are really true that we don't attack ourselves for having those weaknesses because the fact remains that we all have a series of strengths as well as a series of weaknesses so when we look at that reality 
of understanding that we each have strengths and weaknesses, then we must embrace who we are at our best and we must understand that our commitment to improve what we're not as good at is simply part of our growth and personal development. It is no, by no means a basis for our, it shouldn't be a basis for our thinking that we aren't good enough to succeed at something. Let's take, let's take for example, building an online business like I'm doing and like so many thousands of you are doing. There are certain skills within building an internet marketing business that I literally know at this very moment I do not have. I just know I don't have those skills. That's not to say that I may not later acquire those skills and it's not to say that I should attack myself because I don't have the skills that, that I know are required. But instead, knowing what I don't know positions me to learn in those areas by consciously getting the right training and support and by putting these lessons into practice and into action on a daily basis rather than simply waiting to know it perfectly before taking any action at all. And then at the same time, in order to expedite my own success to every extent possible, I outsource the areas of weakness so that those areas of weakness don't affect the, the, the momentum of forward progress that I'm making with, with my business development. That way I get the best of both worlds and the same can be for you all, all of you as well. Remember that when you identify honestly and without regret or with, without blows to your self-esteem, respective self-esteems, that when, when, we, when we each, you, all of you as well as me, when we each analyze what we're not good at, that is a positive experience when we attach the right emotion to it. And what I mean by the right emotion is that when we analyze our own weaknesses and we decide consciously to improve upon those things while outsourcing the tasks relating to those weaknesses, then what ends up happening is we end up learning over time so that those weaknesses are not weaknesses any longer and at the same time by outsourcing what we don't know our absence of knowledge and skill and ability in a certain area need not inhibit our ultimate success with what we know has to get done. None of us should ever think that our lot in life is is simply not to be happy. We were meant and are meant to be as happy as possible. We were meant to optimize our talents and abilities and skills and to do so in a way that touches the lives positively of those we love as well as others in effect having a positive impact on the world. We're not meant to suffer. We're not meant to live a meager existence where all we do is just sacrifice ourselves to the point where others are happy and we're sad and depressed and miserable and not successful. We need not give up who we are or give up ourselves in order to make sure that others around us do well. Success is there for anybody who wants to attain it. Just because we are successful doesn't mean that others have to be not successful. There is more than enough success to go around. There's more than enough wealth to go around. And the minute we understand that we need to jettison or get rid of a, the mentality that, that embraces a lack of abundance will be the moment that we change our lives in understanding that happiness as well as, as, well as success are there for the taking for anybody who chooses to claim it for themselves. There is no monopoly on happiness and success in the world. That includes a monopoly on happiness and success in building strong and profitable businesses. There's absolutely no need for that. No need whatsoever. And if you wonder about that, watch other installments of the vision of the Oli Cantos Visionary series 
and see for yourselves other aspects of personal life and business development that really can come together here to enable all of you to understand that ultimately it's our true beliefs about ourselves and our ability to contribute to the world that will determine how successful we are. And by the way, we define success for ourselves. Be true to who you are. And if you desire to make a lot of money, be okay with that. It doesn't mean that you're a, a greedy son of a gun that simply cares only about yourselves or that it's, you know, it just doesn't mean that you simply disregard the needs of others simply to get rich, but rather when you make more money in your businesses or in your careers, and for that matter, when I do, within my own business and my own career, when all of us, when any of us do, then we end up having more of an ability to choose the options that are available to us to make the most of the quality of our lives. The fact is that it's not the money itself that should be the goal. It need not be, but rather it's what the money gets us. Like let's just say you have specific income goals. All right, you have income goals. So ask yourselves, okay, if you had that money, what would it get you? And then when you imagine what would it get you, how would it make you feel if you got those things that you're saying that you want? So that's why it's important for all of us not only to make friends with money and to be buddies with money, but to understand how doing so enables us to be more of who we are. If we are giving individuals then having more money enables us to give more away. If we're greedy individuals, then having more money means that, it, that we have more money to hoard. So it's not the money itself that's the issue with regard to whether or not it's a good thing or not. It's what we do with the wealth that we have. So don't be ashamed to make money. Don't feel guilty just because you want to take your lives to the next level because you know that more money will give you more choices to live life the way you want, to go where you want to go, to possess what you want to possess, and to give to the causes you care about. You don't have to be, oh gosh, you know the thing that I've heard periodically is, well, you know, I'm going into this field, it doesn't make a lot of money, but at least I make a difference. Hey, you know what, let me, let me just tell you, just putting it straight out there, just because you want to make a big difference doesn't mean you need to be broke. Do you get that? You don't need to be broke to make a big difference in the world. As a matter of fact, Bill Gates, the wealthiest man in the world, makes a significant difference in the world because of his wealth. And you know, sometimes people say, well, only money doesn't buy happiness. Well, you know what? My answer? neither does poverty. We cannot have a poverty mentality where we think that there are just simply the haves and the have-nots and that's simply it. We have the ability within ourselves to have more and to be more and to do more when we understand that happiness is our birthright. Happiness does not need to be relegated merely to the few, the so-called elite. Happiness, as I said earlier, is there for the asking for anybody willing to work for it and to understand that happiness is in the here and now and not merely in some distant horizon that you reach someday. Because if you always think about happiness as something that takes place in the future, then no matter at what point you find yourselves in life, then the future is always in the future. And you never get to it if it's that way. But what if instead you understand that happiness is the here and now and in, in having true gratitude for the many blessings that you have in your lives. And all of you, no matter who you are watching this, all of you, when you look at it, have much for which to be grateful. And if you think, I don't have anything to be grateful for, really, you don't, huh? 
you have the, this, you're watching this video on a computer, which is powered by electricity, when many people around the world don't even have electricity, even in the 21st century. Really, you have nothing to be grateful for? You have hot and cold running water, most of you, and others don't? You have food on the table? You obviously could afford this computer that you're watching this video on. <laughs> Other people don't even have this technology. You have nothing to be grateful for, really? Do you really expect anyone to really believe it? And, and just let me let me just ask you this way. What goal is there in, in simply just being negative in that way and, and, and feeling like, oh, well, you know, oh, uh, well, I have nothing to be grateful for. What does that get you? It gets you nothing but misery and sadness. And again, I assertively say to all of you who may be thinking that way, and I'm serious about this, this is not hype. Be happy with who you are, knowing that you have the ability to change yourselves for the future by changing your mentality and your mindset right now. It's just a literal decision. It doesn't have to take long. It literally comes with the breakthrough and understanding that happiness is there when you simply decide you're happy. And you do that by having gratitude for all the many blessings you have and having real emotion behind that gratitude because when you are grateful for what you have, then you end up getting more of what you want. It's amazing how that works. And this is what all of this relates to, back to the quote of Margaret Thatcher. Again, it's something worth that bears repeating again. Watch your thoughts, they become your words because they become your words. Watch your words because they become your actions. Watch your actions because they become your character. Margaret Thatcher is a wise woman to have thought those things because that is absolutely true. Beyond a doubt, it is absolutely true. So what do we do with that? That's not just some little cute quote saying that we should just just sort of like passively say, ah, well, that's interesting. But instead, we should harness it for its amazing truth. We can shape our character by what we think of ourselves and our ability right now. Literally, by not p spending a dime, if you could just get what I'm telling you here, and, and, and I'm saying this to you, not, not in, in any arrogant way, but in an enthusiastic, positive way, that holy smokes, you all have so much to be grateful for, so just go for it and live life to the fullest. If you spend not another penny, just understand that your life is, is meant to be lived well. Okay, so today, or tonight, I'd like, to, I'd like to give you some action assignments like I usually do on these ins installments of the Visionary Series. First thing, memorize that quote that I just gave you from Margaret Thatcher because it's a, it's a model worth having, it's, it's something worth living by. It's really important that you do that. And because it, it just will remind you, as you memorize that, it will remind you the control that you have over your ultimate destiny. That is not some cute, catchy catchphrase. That is literally the truth, that you are in control ultimately of your own destiny. We may not have the ability to control everything that happens around us and the circumstances to which we are subjected, but what we do have an ability to control is how we react to those circumstances. All of you, if not most of you, if not all of you have heard that before. Put that into practice and really understand how that really works here, okay? So that's the first uh, action assignment. But uh, the, the next action assignment uh, that I have for you is, if you haven't done so already, as assigned in other versions and in other installments of the Visionary Series, I want you to get the book Psycho, or the new Psycho Cybernetics by Max Maltz, M-A-L-T-Z. There you will learn how you have limited your own thinking and what you can do to surpass that old, that old approach so that you can really unleash and unlock your true power and your true potential. That's an amazing, amazing book. It has changed my life. And I'm, I'm telling you that to get that book because I don't get a penny out of recommending that book. Holy cats, you could just go and buy it online. You could go to, to if you have an iPhone, you can go and get it through Audible. You can go to iTunes and get it. You can go to, to your local bookstore and get it. You can download it online from somewhere, for, uh, through Amazon or wherever. You could go to the library and get it. Whatever way you get it, just get it and read it. And don't just read it passively. Put into action what it says. The second action assignment that I have for you today is for you to take an honest assessment of the things that you believe about yourselves in every area of your lives. Personal, professional, spiritual. Everything that you believe about yourselves. 
good and bad. And all the things that you believe good about yourselves, be grateful for those things, knowing that that's just the beginning of all the amazing power and potential that you have in your lives. And anything that's negative, take an honest look at those things and divide those negative assertion or negative assessments into two categories. One, are those negative assessments really true based on real fact or are they based on assumptions? If they are based on assumptions, then let them go and give them give them power no more. And if those assessments are true and are objectively true, I mean literally as objective as, well, you know what, as for me myself, I cannot fly a plane. Well, I just can't, you know, I just, I literally can't. I haven't taken the training, I haven't put in the hours, etc. I cannot fly a plane. That is objectively true. What is not objectively true is, well, you know what, I'm not really uh, the kind of person that people really like to spend time with. That is not objectively true. That's, some, that's something that's more within ourselves. So that's just sort of an example, okay? So look at the negative things that you think about yourselves in doing this assessment. And, and in addition to getting rid of the, the, the things that are not based in fact, with the things that are based in fact, decide right now either that you are going to dedicate yourselves to, to, to bolstering those weaknesses by learning more of the skills that you don't have or outsource those things so that you can, you, especially when it comes to certain skills, outsource those things so that especially when it comes to relate the, the, the way they relate to your business, if you're building an online business or whatever business you're building, outsource those things so that way even if you have those as weaknesses, it won't matter because you're going to be able to take care of it by having somebody else do what you're not good at. A caveat though, the one thing you cannot outsource is what you think about yourselves. You cannot, you cannot outsource that, that, you just, you can't. You have to change directly what you think of yourselves. And that is within your control, okay? The third action assignment. I want you to click on the link below and I want you to get involved by learning more about the business that I'm a part of. You're like, what business? You haven't really talked about any of that. Well, let me tell you, the kind of business that I'm in, I get to share my thoughts, opinions about whatever, and in the process I make money by being who I am and by sharing what I want to contribute with the world by adding real content online and by just being me. Everybody likes different things. I get to be me and yet in the process I make money. You can be you and in the process make money as well and you can show others how to do the same. You want to learn how to do that, click on the link below and do it right now. Take action and don't assume you can't do it. Don't assume you can't do it because there is no reason that you, that, that you have that you can say you cannot build it. Because even if without knowing all the details yet, I'm just telling you there's nobody who can't build this business either by, by outsourcing stuff that they don't know or by learning the skills. It is all doable, okay? So that's the last action assignment. Take action, click on the link below, provide your best email address, click on the submit button. That is it. Do not leave this page without doing that, all right? Okay, so uh, in, in closing here, uh, I, I'm just really, really appreciative to all of you. Please like this video, share this video, spread it all over the place because I really want this to be of help to folks with the things that I've been talking about here, regardless of whether they're in business or not. But these things, that, uh, literally, were things that I didn't know when I was a lot younger. And hopefully to the extent that any of this is helpful to you, I hope that you share this information with folks so that way they can understand that they are ultimately in control of their own destiny. And that is something that is really, really important to understand because if for no other reason you understand that you can be in control of your own destiny when you decide that you're in control of your own destiny, then that is when you really get to unleash the amazing, amazing power of who you truly are. Thank you everybody for watching. Click on the link below. I look forward to getting to talk with you soon. Please get in touch with me, like and share this on, on social media. Get this done, comment below, and I'm really excited to get to be with you here. And please, let's continue this relationship and thank you for being a part of my life by watching these. And I look forward to getting to know each of you as we get to interact more, not only just online, but ultimately in person. Thank you so much everybody and I will see you soon. Until next time.